and his voice. We're talking today about voices. Voices. And um, next six Sundays I will not be here. Um, so you can really come to church. The sermon will be shorter. And, um, but uh, some people ask me, they ask me, um, if it's my last Sunday, can we do like an hour and a half? I'm okay with that. You okay with that? <laughs> God's going to help us. Amen. Oh, man. I have some day words about the, the prophets and the different voices. And you know, with every prophet, every message that came, God had a certain agenda. God had a certain focus. God had his heart that he wanted to reveal. And I want to give to you some, uh, some pointers, and uh, I know you will get another other thousand pointers also as Holy Spirit guide you, because when you look at the Word, there's so many, so many facets. Amen. Amen. But when we talk about voices, I first of all want to say, my brother, my sister, we, we are walking in a, you are living in a community, but you determine who will be the community. That community is in your head, that community is in your heart, that community is all around you. You decide, who will I, how do they call it, your inner circle? Who will you bring in your inner circle? And you know, if something bad happened in your life and you got disappointed and you feel you have an issue with that man, and you bring in your inner circle the voice of judgment, the voice of rejection, the voice of criticism, the voice of unforgiveness, the voice of bitterness, you bring into your inner circle those spirits, those demons. Because when you talk their language and you accept their language, more and more you accept that spirit. Is it not that you heard the language of the word and the language was said that, it was said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that you will not perish, but have eternal life. And you heard the word, and you accept the word. And based on the word that you accepted, the spirit of God came, and he brought rebirth of your spirit. Not true? The power that, of the manifestation of his word. But the same. The enemy cannot create something new. He can just copycat. So the same, when I receive a word of bitterness, the word of rejection, the word of depression, the word of negativity, the word of frustration, I receive that word. The more you receive that word, the more you call that spirit that is connected with that word. The Holy Spirit is connected with this word. Hello? You receive this word, you will be connected with the Holy Spirit. And you will be connected with the voice of God. There's not a thing that you must learn how to hear the voice of God. No. John 10 says, my sheep know my voice. Klar. So you decide, did Jesus speak the truth or not? If he said, my sheep know my voice, there were not some calls given to the sheep when they were lambs and now they're going to learn how to hear the voice of the shepherd. Our challenge is to distinguish his voice. Among all the other voices. Because we allow those other voices in our lives. Because we take that word and we give it authority. I take that word because he really hurt me. I really got disappointed. So I cannot just trust the person. That's true. You cannot trust everybody. You must have faith in them because God believes in them. But I know trust has to do with something else in how you walk with one another. I understand. But... If you keep it out because you have your reasons. When you are alone and you have a fight with somebody in your heart, you must just know you have that type of spirit with you in your inner circle. So if it's God in my inner circle and certain people, then what I think of that person would be that what God is saying about that person. But I've, if I have an issue with someone... I first of all have an issue with God. Because God is not in my inner circle now. Ish. You're going to heaven, yes, because he's in your heart. But having fellowship with him, him making his home with you, is something else. 
So in my inner circle, I can have a, the, the type of reasoning that I can reason with people. I can think about things, and I'm very busy in my reasoning. But whose voice is that? Whose voice is that? Make sure who you allow in your house, in your house, your life. Because your spirit is reborn, and the Holy Spirit is testifying in your spirit. He's crying out, first of all, Abba, Papa, Romans 8. Hey? But then from there, Holy Spirit wants to testify with your spirit what God is saying. He wants to testify in your spirit, not just the agenda. What must I do? What must I do? When I'm in trouble, when I'm not in trouble. What is the principles that I must follow? What is the principles I mustn't follow? What is the thing that can set me free? No, just fellowship. God sharing his heart with you. You sharing your heart with him. Hello? And you have a language for that. And he's in your inner circle of fellowship. He's in your heart. Yes, yes, your spirit perfect, reborn. But fellowship here, because he has called you into fellowship, eternal life, that you may know, that you may know, and that word know equals fellowship. That's a relational knowing. Hey, it's not an information knowing. It's a relationship knowing. That is what God has called you into, but then you need to let go of the other voices. No, I need five guys again, please. I hope I have better demons this time. That sounds bad. But the guys that had to play the role of demons, they were very bad in doing that. Okay, don't, don't fear. Um, five guys, thank you. I have one. Peter, I can see your boldness. Thank you. I can see your boldness also, not just pointing the finger, you know. Hallelujah. There we have it. Okay. Now you must make a circle. You were not here the first time. Make a circle like a, like a horlozy. That's a horlozy. There. There, and you there, and you there, and you there, and you there. Now, this is your life, my brother, my sister, and you are in the middle. And there's not just five voices, but there's a lot of voices. Okay, you will be the voice um, talking about the cherry. So you are talking about the cherry the whole time. <laughs> not the cherry that I eat, the cherry I must see to be unfaithful. You will all be about money. Uh, we must get some money in this way, and that way, and that way. You will all be about, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Whatever you feel. <laughs> religion. How to be religious and in trouble or not in trouble. That's not who you guys are, but I'm just, uh, I'm asking you to play a role that you never would be. Yes. And you are the Holy Spirit, just for today. <laughs> and you will speak to me. Whatever God is saying. So you just speak the word. Now, my brother, my sister, that in your life, there's going to be voices. Now, now you start to speak. You speak to her for the next five minutes. Keep on speaking. If you only know one sentence, you just say that sentence over and over. Okay. So this is your life. But just add another 30 voices. This is your life. Now I can come and I can fight this thing about the financial crisis. And I fight this thing in Jesus' name. But you know what is prayer? Prayer is positioning. I position myself. Now we did this illustration for 79 times in church. You remember? And in this illustration, prayer is positioning. So when I pray through prayer, praying in tongues, or praying Afrikaans, English, whatever, Swahili, I'm coming closer why are you stop speaking? You must be faithful demons. The devil is faithful in their assignment towards you. Those demons are assigned by Lucifer to your life. This will be our strategy to destroy that man. And they are here under assignment. And you will be a faithful. Are you giving up? You not, will not be able to destroy my life. The devils must speak. Go. And so, and the Holy Spirit speaking. Hello. And when I pray, and when I pray, I'm coming closer to what God is saying. And He's speaking the word. The Holy Spirit speaking the word. Through prayer, don't fight your financial situation. But in prayer, come to God and His word.
Because you won't believe the battle belongs to the Lord. Everybody, the battle belongs to the Lord. Those voices speak. When I come closer to here, whose voice am I going to hear clearly? Hello? Oh, you must focus on me, please. What is the voice that you will hear clearly? The voice of God. Because I'm closest to Him. These voices about the financial crisis, about the lust, about the that, about the that, about the whatever, about religion. I cannot hear those voices so clearly because I'm too close to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So clearer and clearer I'm hearing the voice of God. Hello? Are you with me? Because I position myself close to the Word, close to the voice of the Holy Spirit. But I can position myself here, and in the name of Jesus, I'm trying to, 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 to fight this, but, but this voice is interrupting you. The voice of rejection is interrupting the whole time. Hello, are you with me? And so God is speaking to the church and he says, Demons, you must speak. speak. So, John 3.20 is not to receive Christ. John 3.20 is God is speaking to the church. Jesus is speaking to the church. The people that know him. The people that are saved. And he said, I stand at the door and knock because I want to have fellowship. I want to have an intimate time. So, he says, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear the knock and open, are you with me? Yes? No. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice. Not if you hear the knock. Because my brother, all right, knock. Make as if you're knocking. There will be a lot of knocking. There will be a lot of knocking. And if you don't position yourself through prayer and the word, here, you will not hear God knocking. Okay, stop the knocking, just speak. Taking all focus. Okay, are you with me? You devils must speak. <laughs> are you with me? And so, my brother, when in prayer, you position yourself, not for an answer, not for a breakthrough because you're fighting this thing. Stop it. Focus on God. The author, perfecter of your faith, run the race with endurance, eyes set on Jesus Christ. Amen? And you run towards Him because He will fight the battle against that. He, against that. They lost already against Him. But as long as you think you must fight the battle against those demons, okay, you will lose all the way. You will not have that quality life God has for you. But if you hear the voice behind the door and you open, you will have fellowship with one another. Are you with me? And those voices, you give him, start to give him a flat ignore. Hello? And you can have this life with God. But if you don't position yourself with, to him, if you don't come to know the word, not for answers, if you don't come to know the word, to know the language of God, to understand his voice, to become clearer and clearer, these, these, these voices will be so clear. I mean, if you have an issue with somebody, oh, you can explain. If you have frustration at the work, oh, you can explain everything, what's happening at the work. You can explain a lot of things very clearly. But is it because the Holy Spirit made it clear or some other spirit made it clear to you? You unfaithful devils. <laughs> okay. It's just in the play. I cut it off. I don't speak it over them. Okay, they are just exposing what the devil is doing. So my brother, my sister, there's devils speaking to you and they will not stop speaking to you. But you can ignore them. And you can walk away. Not by looking at them. You can walk away by just looking at Jesus. And through him, he's the conqueror. And you walking to him, you are more than a conqueror through him and everybody just cry about it or say amen. amen okay are you with me so you start to give those other rubbish give him a hand you start to ignore those other rubbish and you will see my brother my sister you will see your breakthroughs 
you will see your breakthrough. You can sit in that negativity or in that, that depression or that whatever, that fear about the provision will not be there. Walk away. Walk away. Because you start to read the word and you see perfect love drives out all fear. I have not received a spirit of, of slavery to fear again. I have not received a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. And I start to believe that. I take that as the voice that I will know. Amen. Voices. Voices. But if you're in your inner circle, you're also close to that rubbish. And the fear that you can get hurt again. When somebody is saying something that against you, but it's not against you, it's actually to help you. But I don't see it because the Father loves me, I must receive discipline. And discipline means we are focusing sometimes on that one thing that you lack. Jesus loved Loved. He loved. Jesus loved the rich young man. The word says, he loved the rich young man. And then he said, go and sell everything that you have and then come and follow me. And the rich young man walked away. I don't know what Jesus did that the writer wrote, Jesus loved him. But it was so visible that the writer in Mark, that Mark would write it down and says, and say, Jesus loved him and said, go and sell everything that you have. What a hard word. But it started with love. So in God's love, we could give. Sometimes somebody can give you a hard word. But many times it's a hard word for your flesh. But actually for your spirit, you're supposed to see Jesus that loves you. The first part of that verse. Remember that first part of the verse, and that sometimes, yes, there will be mampara way of speaking of that this guy or that guy said something to you. But you go and hear from God. What is he saying to you through that person that said it in a very, very, very wrong way? You don't call a friend a demon of judgment and you judge that person. This is not the way, you disciple. This is not the way. This was not truth in love. This was not the right way. Who, who is that guy to have the right to say that to me? That's how the kings made with Jeremiah. Then he was thrown in the pit. Then this happened to him. Then that happened to him. Because he was still young. Right in the beginning, he, he said to God, I'm too young. And, and a lot of kings said that, basically. Because he, who gave him the right? That man is just prophesying all these negative things. Put him in jail. Or throw him in the pit. Or do this. Or do that. With this young man, Jeremiah, my brother, my sister, please, your inner circle. Just say, the voices of my inner circle. You decide who will be the voice in the inner circle. May it be the voice of God. Now, we did a series about 12 years ago about seven prophetic voices. And we took seven Sundays for that. Now we're talking about nine voices. And we take one Sunday for that instead of seven. Um, but uh, we're just going to do an overview. And maybe if God leads us, we will do later in the year. We will go into it more intensely. But I really believe we need to learn in this season more than anything else how to hear God's voice in a time when there's such an overloading of voices of information, of, I mean, there's some conspiracy theory in America in it's like one minute and it's in the hand of your son, in, in your hand with a, with a phone. Whatever hell can vomit on earth, within one minute it can be in your hand, that voice. Are you with me? It was never like that. It was very easy in the past. If you must talk about the word that says, be still and know, be still and know, be still and know. Why? You need to hear what God is saying. So be still and know is to still all the other voices. How do you do it? By coming closer to God and wait on him. Be still and know I am God. So many times through the prophets, when you would go through all the prophet uh, books, that the letters that they wrote, you will see that verse. Of become silent before the Lord. Wait on him. The Psalms so many times. Wait on him. Why? 
because you must get rid of all that other voices. But don't fight the voice. Just walk to God and His Word. Walk to the voice. Let's say, walk to the voice. If I can say it like that. So you read the Bible, if you understand it or not, if it makes sense or not, if it touches you or not, if you feel it's something that's good for you. No, you're just coming closer. The rain. You're com coming into the rain. No, man, it's ridiculous. I'm getting wet. Why must I walk into the rain? I'm just getting wet. It's irritating and it's, it's cold and it's, everything is wet. But what happened? That guy in the, in the Karoo or in the Macquilland, he's so excited. I remember some, some kids in Namibia in one place where for 10 to 15 years there were no rain. Those kids that were born, they were in the rain because the first time in 15 years of, in their whole life they saw rain. <laughs> Just think yourself in that situation. But what am I saying, my brother, my sister? Why must I do it? It's not logical. Get into the place where tomorrow the whole environment will be like this. Wow! From that desert place to Namakuland where suddenly all that flowers and everything is just boom. And everything changed where God is coming down. Where His mercy is coming down. Where His rain, His love, His presence. Where His word is raining down on you. So shall my word be, Isaiah 55. Amen. Just like the rain come down from heaven and water it and bring forth. It wasn't the water fighting the thing and doing the thing. No. It was already inside of every plant. But without the water, it will not happen. Without the spirit, it will not happen. It's inside of you. It's in your perfect spirit, reborn. In your spirit, that capacity is there to blossom for God, to have breakthrough upon breakthrough, to have an excellent life with Christ. But you cannot do it if it's not for the reign of the Spirit. The Makwalant will stay the same, it will be desert. But in your desert place, in your desert place, everything is already provided. In the desert, all those seeds for all those flowers, everything is already provided. Not 80%, 100%. In perfection, that seed, it will become that, that plant. It will bring forth that, those flowers. Exactly perfectly as the previous 60, 100 years. 60 to 100 years. Are you with me? It's already inside of you. But without the Spirit, without the Spirit, nothing will change for the rest of your life. Nothing will change without the Spirit. Wait on God. Amen. Get into his word. Make sure that what is perfect it must be here. That it will come forth. But if this incorruptible seed of the word, you don't plant it in here, plant it in here. If you don't plant it in there, what must come up? The enemy will plant the weeds and all that other rubbish. You don't need to make an effort to do that. He will do his work. If you don't plant, let it come in. But if it, the seed is falling, there's no impact. You carry on. You read the word. Even if you feel frustrated, even if it feels to you it means nothing, you put that seed in the ground. Suddenly, with a major shock, you will be surprised when the Holy Spirit, the rain come down and and then you will think, what happened? But it was the Word and the Spirit that connected in your life. Let's say the Word of God and the Spirit of God must connect in my life. But my brother, if the Word of rejection and the Word of the issue and the Word of bitterness connect with the demon of bitterness and the demon of rejection and the demon of negativity and the demon of religion, that will also have an impact. May God set us free. Amen.